and he's a uh, guys. Your next comedian. This is also his first time here at McCormick's. Please give it up for Gary Kramer. So I've uh, got a little bit of an embarrassing confession to make. I'm uh, not actually this six foot tall Irishman that you think you see before you. I'm two midgets in a very elaborate costume. We're very sneaky. Those of you who aren't laughing at that joke are looking me up and down like, where are they hiding? <laughs> Fucking contortionists. Fucking in there somewhere? What the fuck? So the Giants won on Sunday. Boom! Oh. Obviously you've heard. Um, I really don't care about football, so I probably wouldn't give a shit. I'm just tired of all my friends who are Giants fans, like, coming up to me and being like, Dude, we beat the Patriots! Really? You beat the Patriots? I was not aware that you were a professional footballer. You must be seriously fast, because it's like an hour after the game. I'm amazed you got here so quickly. So, you know, I'm not that big into football. I like Indiana Jones. So I respond, dude, did you see Monday night? I broke into this tomb. We went to steal this statue, and this boulder came after us, and we were like running away, and there were darts flying everywhere. It was crazy, but we managed to beat the Nazis. <laughs> So, sometimes I hate living in Virginia, and it's not, you know, the charmingly random murder sprees, it's not the thinly veiled racism and homophobia, I can deal with that. You know, I'm a straight man, I'm white, I already made it through school, I feel like I'm safe from all that shit. It's the name, Virginia. We were named for Queen Elizabeth, the Virgin Queen making us the only place in the world to be named for the fact that some old dead lady could not get laid. <laughs> Fucking worst place to live ever. <laughs> so, this whole green movement's all the rage now. You know, it's fucking everywhere. And I mean, I'm fine with it. You know, I understand. Like, we get all our shit from the earth. Maybe we want to have that around for a couple more years. Probably a good idea. I just think people take it a little too far sometimes. Like, the new uh, Coca-Cola commercial. They have, like, the spokesman come out and he's like, For every Coke that you buy, we'll save a polar bear. You know, it's not that immediate, but, you know, that's, that's the gist. To me, that seems dangerously close to him being like, Tch! Fucking buy the coke or I will ice this polar bear. I'll fucking do it! That's why coke cans are red and that's uh, polar bear blood. You're drinking a cold, refreshing glass of polar bear blood. Ugh. So uh, you always see in the movies, you know, you have like the bank robbers come in, and they got their ski masks and their shotguns out. They're like, everybody get on the floor. So I, I've enacted a plan to prepare for this eventuality. Whenever I go into a bank, I carry a ski mask with me. So that when they come in with their shotguns, I can just slip on my ski mask. And be like, yeah, everybody fucking hit the deck. Everybody down. And they'll be like, who are you? I'll be like, I'm Mike. I was at the meeting. You don't remember me? I forgot my shotgun. Could I borrow one of yours? Thank you. Fucking hit the deck, Susan! I'm sorry, I'm on their side now! Boom! Susan's dead, because she did not prepare. I prepared. And that's why I will survive the bank robbery. That's about all I have, actually, so, uh, have a nice night. Tickets. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. guys. Uh, what is this? What's it? Gary Morton is the headliner this morning, this weekend? Huh? Greg Morton's the headliner this weekend at the Funny Bone, and uh, the guy hosting you're gonna get to see a little bit later tonight. His name's uh, Nick Cantone, but I'm gonna give you tickets for uh, either that show or whatever show you feel applicable. God damn it! Get the fuck out of here, Blue Ball. All right, fine. I don't do improv! Like, I don't do improv! 
I don't know how to do this. Alright, alright, like, so the winner is uh, Penis in My Butt, which oh. apparently, um, unless you're German, that's probably not a real name. <laughs> so we're gonna go with another name. Let's see who this could be. It, uh, hopefully it's not some... Oh my god, for uh, a second time in a row, Marlena Jones! <laughs> Congratulations, Marlena. Uh, we'll, I'm going to do another drawing later, so don't you guys fret. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to bring on your next comedian. You ready for that? Uh, you guys are in for a treat. This guy's a regular in the Richmond Funny Bone. This guy's really funny. One of my favorites. Good friend of mine. Give it up for Jesse Thomas. This weekend. Please give it up for my good friend, Mr. Nick Canto. Stretch, your next comedian. This guy fucking crushed it at the Richmond Funny Bone tonight. Uh, please give it up. Have a good night, Simone. Drive safe. Drive safe, Simone's friend. Whatever that is. I don't know. I haven't met her yet. I haven't met her yet. But with that being said, I'm gonna bring on your next comic. This guy's hilarious. Please give it up for the very funny Mr. Bounce Adams. Y'all give it up for all the comics you've seen here tonight. I listen to a lot of rap music, especially when I was a teenager, and I tried to convince my parents that rap music was very philosophical. I told them that NWA stands for Nietzsche with Attitude. <laughs> But then my parents told me, no, NWA stands for Nutcase with Autism. <laughs> so don't call that shit. It's fucking funny. <laughs> like, I finally figured out why they're not allowed to teach sex in schools. Think about it. Teachers tell you that Christopher Columbus discovered America. Try and apply that same concept to porn stars discovering the G-spot. <laughs> you didn't discover shit. You may have landed on it by accident. <laughs> oh man, oh man. <laughs> shit. Where the hell was I going with that? Oh yeah. I was watching TV recently, and I saw Donald Trump, and he said, America needs a president who has a strong work ethic. Yeah, Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing boosts the American spirit like clean dishes. <laughs> and who else is going to rape Al-Qaeda with leaf blowers? <laughs> Even I have a strong work ethic. Maybe Al Qaeda can get donkey punched on the short bus. <laughs> Time to ring the bell. <laughs> oh, please don't, Mr. Bounce. Please don't. No, no, no. Thank you for calling Captain One. <laughs> Oh, shit. That is my time, y'all. That is my time. <laughs> Mr. Bounce Adams, everybody! Yes. Love that guy. Uh, your next comedian, you can find him on uh, Chris Comedy on Twitter. Also, uh, yeah, uh, you know, he. This your next comedian, he won't watch the Super Bowl, Unless there's a team with a derogatory name to, you know, Native Americans. And uh, with that being said, please give it up for the very funny Mr. Chris Martin.
did this last night. <laughs> How do you like this stuff? We can do it. <laughs> yeah. I guess I have to hold it. I was nervous when I do stand up comedy. How nervous? More nervous than a Ford truck driver during the Mayan apocalypse. <laughs> My mouth is drier than Betty White's vagina. <laughs> the mentalist is so perceptive he can actually tell the difference between gladiatorial combat and football. It's hard to say which is more homoerotic, Spartacus, the Super Bowl, or David Beckham's H&M body armor commercial during the Super Bowl. <laughs> I wanted to celebrate the Super Bowl by getting in the true spirit of football, so I had a tailgate party in the parking lot of the traumatic brain injury unit of the Mayo Clinic. But I really wanted to go to Charlie Sheen's tailgate party where they snort cocaine off the whale tails of porno stars. Uh, Doctor Who told me that joke would suck. So the thing about the Super Bowl, the most exciting moment for me was when the Miami Dolphin ran on the field and raped Tom Brady, <laughs> and then ran up into the skyboxes and raped Gazelle Bunchen <laughs> and Rush Limbaugh. The thing about the Super Bowl is that problematical is that you have to wait for the uh, commercials to end and the football to start in order to take a leak. <laughs> Thanks to Metamucil, I had a Super Bowl movement. <laughs> or as I like to call it, spiking the end zone. <laughs> GoDaddy got in trouble for objectifying women, supporting the Stop Online Piracy Act, and in a to boot, the founder of GoDaddy, Bob Parsons, shot an elephant. So it was only appropriate that during the Super Bowl, the GoDaddy commercial featured a semi-nude Danica Patrick shooting an elephant, Kim.com, and Bob Parsons in the foot. <laughs> David Beckham showed a lot of skin during his commercial for H&M Body Armor, finally an asshole with more tattoos than Janine Garofalo. I want to apologize for calling Janine Garofalo and David Beckham assholes. I really meant to call them douchebags. <laughs> Exciting Apple commercial in which Steve Jobs ran down a Chinese assembly line in gym shorts, throwing <laughs> tiny hammers into iPads. Oh, Mitch Hedberg came to me in a dream and told me that joke would suck. <laughs> so the Apple Skyback, uh, Skybox served uh, extra spicy hot chicken and sprinkled with hexane. <laughs> Doc Brown told me that joke would suck. So uh, I, was, I lived near Bird Park and I heard a scream during the Super Bowl. It came all the way from Carytown. Turned out it was just Ray Bullock having an orgasm during the Marvel Avengers Super Bowl commercial. <laughs> I'm looking, uh, they had a Disney Pixar commercial for John Carter of Mars. I'm looking forward to the special guest appearance by Jar Jar Binks. I always found the Super Bowl halftime shows better when they were directed by Lenny Riefenstahl. And that was funny when I tweeted it. <laughs> so Madonna had a uh, wardrobe malfunction during the halftime Super Bowl show. Or her hip -hop replacement popped out. Last minute addition to the Super Bowl show had Bob Persons and George Orwell in an elephant shooting contest. Madonna has a new designer perfume coming out. It smells like wrinkled labia and creative exhaustion.
During the lingerie bowl, Seal, the singer, was spotted on the sidelines scouting for his next wife. <laughs> to honor Mitt Romney, during the lingerie bowl, all the players wore sacred underwear and were only allowed to play in the missionary position. <laughs> Eli Manning is going to Walt Disney World and all those NFL cheerleaders who moonlight as strippers are just going to Orlando. <laughs> My name is Chris Martin. Thank you very much. Be sure to check your bartender, Austin. Welcome back to the stage, your MC, the marvelous Jesse Jarvis. Featured in RBA Magazine. Chris Martin, everybody! Follow him at Chris Comedy on Twitter. Very funny guy, man. Uh, you know what? Uh, before I bring on your next comedian, why don't we do another drawing for Funny Boat tickets? Yeah. Why the fuck not? Yeah. How about this? Let's see who this is going to be before these people try to leave. <laughs> uh, it's Clay Shope here. Clay? Oh, good job, buddy. You won! Let me get you your tickets. Here you go. Mid two. That's good for two tickets to the Richmond Funny Bone date night, huh? Yeah, what you think about that? Give it up for Clay, everybody. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to do one more drawing tonight before the show ends. So if you want to, uh, fill out those empty slips of paper by next to the uh, next to the green bucket. Uh, I'm going to do one more drawing so you can win more tickets. Uh, with that being said, are you ready to meet your next comic? Yes, sir. This guy is one of my best friends, and he is a fucking hilarious comic. I want all of you to give a big round of applause for Mr. Roy Rogers! 